You just announced moments ago, your government, that you will directly sanction Russian President Vladimir Putin. What kind mm -hmm. uh, of response are you hoping to get from him? And you talked about suffocating uh, the regime, but what exactly are those sanctions against the Russian president? Well, uh, it is to freeze his assets. We know that Vladimir Putin doesn't have that many, if any, assets in Canada. But it is a very symbolic gesture, and we're doing so at the same time as the European Union, so Europe, the UK, uh, the US is doing so. So we're really, really doing it in a united front. And it was an important choice for us to do it that way, because obviously, you heard Mike a bit earlier, Putin is testing us. He wants to show that there is no unity within uh, the alliance or, or within the West. But what we have seen throughout the week since the beginning of this crisis is that we are one. Uh, yes, that, 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 that you are one-ish because you are in favor of, of kicking, for instance, uh, Russia out of the SWIFT banking system. Uh, not all of the allies and not all of your allies are in favor of that. So you are not necessarily speaking on from you know the same hymn book so to speak well you know Joyce at the beginning of the week people thought that uh, Germany would never stop their certification of Nord Stream 2 it's been three days now that Nord Stream 2, Nord Stream 2 which is the important pipeline from Russia to Germany that it is cancelled and that they said that we would not be united in uh, sanctioning Putin himself and his close guard and his cabinet. Today, we announced we were doing it, and we're doing it all together. So I'm confident that we can work this uh, together because it is important that, yes, we be united, but at the same time, that we work in lockstep. And that's what is being tested. There will be other tests from the West, but at every time, I'm convinced that we will step up to the plate. So at what point do you decide that sanctions aren't enough? And, you know, how do you measure whether they're working? Well, we, we know, uh, Joyce, that uh, politically speaking, the announcement is today, and economically speaking, the, the effect of these sanctions will be made in time. But at the same time, it is so important to do so because uh, oligarchs and, and, and the Russian regime cannot go ahead and be in blatant violation of democracy, democratic rights within their own country, but more than that, invading a sovereign nation, which are, are, is its neighbor, and meanwhile, benefit from all the stability, the wealth, and everything that comes with the fact of, uh, uh, of being part of the West. We know they have assets in our countries. We know that their families also benefit from them. Uh, and, and so that's why we wanted to act. And I'm really, uh, I'm, I'm really uh, encouraged by seeing also particularly my European counterparts being very strong on this issue because we know that oligarchs have assets, for example, in, in London. We know that Berlin has many of, of the Russian regime's uh, uh, real estate properties. And so that's why it is important for us to stand by with them while they're also taking these decisions. Okay, but why incremental? Like, this is your third round of sanctions against Russia. So I'm wondering, you know, what, what is it? Drip, drip, drip. So why not just hit Russia with every sanction at once if you, if you want it to hurt? Um, it seems that, you know, doing it incrementally, is that a tactic? And, and what are you trying to achieve by doing it incrementally? Well... We are looking at all options. And so that's why diplomatic channels are extremely, extremely busy. I'm talking to my counterparts every day. I just had a conversation two hours ago with Secretary Blinken. I'm in close contact with Anna Baerbock from Germany, as well as Listras from the UK. And we're coming up at the same time that this further invasion is continuing. We're coming up with new ideas, things that have never necessarily been done but we want to make sure that we really put maximum pressure and, as I said earlier in the press conference, that we're suffocating 
the Russian, Russian regime. So yesterday you said at the, at the news conference yesterday that you summoned Russia's ambassador to Canada uh, to global affairs mm -hmm. to your offices uh, this week. What did you say to him and what did he say to you? Well, I looked at him directly in the eyes and I said to him exactly what I thought about what was happening. You know, when you look at it, what Russia told us a month ago is that no, they would not, you know, continue their military buildup. That was just the West pretending uh, with our own ideas and assessment. And now what we're seeing is that these uh, troops are now invading Ukraine. They were saying that the military exercise that were being held, hold in, held part, pardon, in uh, Belarus were going to happen on February 20th, and then things would end. Now we're seeing that troops are invading through Belarus. So Russia has lied since the beginning of this crisis, and that's what I really wanted to make sure that the Russian ambassador to Canada know. And what did he say to you when you, when they were, they, they, you had already imposed sanctions on Russian officials? Um, was he even slightly deterred? Quite frankly, Joyce, I didn't give him the opportunity to have any form of reaction because the, 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 the trust between our two countries at this point is at a level that it has never been, which is pretty much zero. And so uh, for me as foreign affairs ministers, it is important to have an ambassador in Russia right now. Why? Because Russian people need to know what is going on. Vladimir Putin has been in power for more than 20 years, and they have suffered from that, but also they're under extreme propaganda. It is important for them to understand what is going on, and it is important for us to have an ambassador that can convey these messages, but also help us get to the Russian people themselves. And so that's why it is important also to keep that diplomatic channel. Foreign Affairs Minister Melanie Jolie, thanks for taking the time. I know you're busy. Um, you've been very busy in the last few days, so we appreciate the time you took to talk to us. Thank you. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you all.